Thank you so much, Greg, Jamie, Terry, Juice, for your involvement in our worship service today. And uh, Happy New Year to each and every last one of you. Hope and pray that this year has some wonderful things. Um, 2020 was a very trying year, and we're still going to feel some ramifications from it. But uh, Lord be praised, we have made it through it. Today's lesson, I, I thought about it over the past week, and uh, holidays, I was talking to Grant, you know, it's a, it's a positive and negative. You're, you're running like crazy, Grant, but at the same time, you love seeing your family and your friends. I got a call from uh, my cousin this past week, and he texted me Wednesday or Thursday, and he said, hey man, we're excited about this weekend, and I said, what's going on this weekend? <laughs> and, uh, well, you, you, you marrying me and my fiance? Oh, that. Said, oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I was glad that he uh, messaged me because I just, but I had everything on a dime. I'm ready to go, and my zip drive's got every little thing if I need something. So it went really well, so I was happy for them. Uh, but like I said, Grant and I were talking, the holidays are busy, so much going on. And today's lesson, I wanted to be optimistic. I wanted to be as positive as I can. And I thought about what would be helpful, beneficial, and encouraging for us. I don't really want to think of this sermon as being a New Year's resolution type sermon. Truth is about resolutions is they're hard to keep, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Give it a couple days and things kind of turn here or there. Uh, so I want to look at this more so from the perspective of let's look at our compasses and let's make sure that they are in alignment with God's will. And what was interesting is I got in the mail uh, the house to house and they're all in the back if you don't get them. Uh, just in case we do have some changing in our address strategy on where the house to house is going. But on the front, Alan Webster put a very nice article, and I'm just going to read to you certain portions of what he wrote. And I think you would enjoy seeing the full article, but the title of it is A New You in a New Year. And he lists some things um, that are very encouraging for the congregation, for each member of the congregation. And he says, this sounds like a commercial line from a weight loss clinic, a fitness club, a hair salon, or a skin cream company, but it's not. It's about making decisions regarding spiritual well-being. Are you satisfied with your soul at the beginning of this year? Oh, I see. I enjoyed it. Are you satisfied with your soul and where you are right now at the beginning of this year? And he lists a couple things that can help you put your compass in sync and I wanted to add those. Just I hit a few highlights. He said, this year, put your hand to the plow. The Christian life is compared to running a weight race, winning a fight, sailing a sea. And he says in Luke 9, 62, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of, of God. If you've ever done farming, and my, pers my, my experience with farming is just sitting on the back end as a ground worker. But if you're in the tractor or if you're willing with oxen and you're constantly looking back, where are your rows going to do? They're going to look like this, all zigzag. To keep a straight line, you've got to look straight. Alan Webster would say, let's make a new year and a new you. Put your hand to the plow. Don't look back. Look forward at what you can do. He said, this year, let us keep our eyes focused on the pearly gates. He said, secondly, this year, put your nose to the grindstone. He said, perhaps for you, it's in obeying the gospel. I need to get serious about being a spiritual being. He says, it could be a bad habit or it could be something that I can improve on in my family life. But he says, make it a point to put your nose to the grindstone and get it done. What is it that you know you need to do that you haven't done? Alan Webster says, get it done. Number three, put your ear to the ground. And he says, Jesus criticized those who were hard of spiritual hearing. He says, if we've been closing our eyes and heart to the word, let's open them this year. Let's think about what the word can do for us and make our soul better. He says, next, this year, put your mind in gear. He says, Romans 12, 2, renew your mind. He said, if you've let your heart, and I appreciate, Greg, your spirit today was very encouraging. You know, you just, there's a million things that can go bad, but there's some good things. There's blessings. We still have our health, our families, our well-being. For the most part, we are still safe. And let's continue to be thinking with our mind and gear about renewing it. He says, next, put your shoulder to the wheel. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and with all your mind. Think about this. Have you loved the Lord the way you should have loved him in 2020? If you might say in your mind, I haven't. Well, Alan Webster's article is unique. A new year, a new you. Change that. I want to love the Lord this year with all my heart like he says I do. I should. Let's do that. Okay? 
Alan Webster then says, put your back to the wall. Put your back to the wall. He says, this may be the year that determines my destiny. And I really put that on there. I love that. He says, this year may be the year that determines your destiny. I might not make it to December of this year. It's just a cold, hard fact. And so Alan says, this could be your destination year. Make it the best. Am I taking my battle with Satan seriously? Strap on the armor, Alan says. Will I survive? Will my family survive? I need to act like my back's against the wall. Fight the devil. We're in this together. He says next, keep your feet to the fire. God holds us responsible for our actions. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And lastly, keep your eyes on the prize. Paul said in Philippians 3, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I forget the things which are behind and reach forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So if you haven't gotten the house to house, we have, you will not have a problem getting one. We've got plenty of copies. Get you one in the back. And I enjoy reading that. And uh, the house to house has uh, on the back page, I meant to say, it has a quiz, and if you like to take their quiz, very beneficial. Test your mind and your skill knowledge. And so this morning, it's not about resolutions. Where's your compass? This could be your destination year. Whatever has happened in 2020, it's over. The year has been done. We have had our pros and cons, but now it's 2021. This is the first Lord's Day of the new year. Make it a new year then. And so how can we do that? Think about what you can do for your local congregation right here, for you and I. And I want to give you a few points, and the lesson is yours. I want to begin, though, by reading in Ephesians 4. The Bible says by Paul's hand in verses 1 through 3, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you were called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering." forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So number one, here's what you and I can do. We owe it to be a good influence in our community. When I think of the word community, obviously we think of perhaps, and it's not an incorrect in assessment, the roads, the streets, the houses, but community are the very people who are in your life right now, the people you work with. Who you say good morning. And tomorrow morning, I think, uh, are kids all back in school? Is that happening tomorrow too, I guess? For the most part, maybe. But everyone goes to work, and you're going to say good morning. That's your community. Talk to them. Encourage them. Tell them something good about life. Like we've heard so far this morning from our, our great brothers. Everything we do reflects on us, whether we like to think about that or not. People with whom we are friends, those people, don't they usually know where we worship? Most of them do. They know where you're at. They know where you go. If we behave in an unchristian way, then it can reflect first on the Lord, and then it can reflect on us. Peter mentioned in 1 Peter 3, he said that if you have an unbelieving spouse, you, by the conduct of your life, win them over. Now, the principle sound, think about how the scope of that can be applied in the sense of this practicality. Can you, by your conduct, win somebody over, even if they're not an unbeliever? Well, sure you can. Be a good influence. 2021, I'm just going to keep my compass aligned with God's will and be a good influence to people. Now, maybe in 2020 you can say it hasn't been good. It hasn't been the most positive. Well, change that. We can have a hand in converting someone just by living right. Folks, the way we act ultimately reflects upon the church and the Lord. Jesus came to this earth to teach us how to live. And folks, we must live accordingly. In fact, we learn in the book of Titus chapter 2. In Titus 2 verses uh, 11 and 12. We find here from the apostle Paul's hand to Titus. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. He says in verse 12, teaching us. That denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Why? Show folks you're different. I owe it to my community. You may have failed. Well, this is 2021. New slate. Let's do it this year. 
Because this could be my destination here. Number two, I owe friendliness to visitors. I have actually taken the time, not every year, I'll be honest, but there are some years where I have looked at it and we keep a, a record of every visitor that we have. And I like to count and just count the number. And I know one year, I don't remember how far back it was, but uh, we had 14 visitors in one year. And, and granted, some are from other states. Some are going to make just a one-stop appearance. That's fine. But I want to encourage you in 2021 that when you run into someone who, who is visiting, shake their hand or give them a fist bump. Tell them hello. Welcome to services. Ask them, is there anything that I can do to give you support? Anything I can do to help you? Think about visitors that come in to the building and help encourage them. Studies have shown that if a visitor finds three people that they find very personable and friendly and can relate to, they are more likely to return to services. You know, and I would encourage you even amongst our families. We've got several beloved families here, loving families with great history. If you're not used to, to shaking hands with another, and I don't think there's anybody that I can think of, mm -hmm. but if you're not used to shaking hands with a certain family or this, not because of grudges or anything, but just don't, make it a point this year. I'm going to talk to as many families, as many people across the aisle as I possibly can. Why? Because I want them to feel welcomed and warmed. We learn in Hebrews chapter 13, the Bible says in Hebrews 13 and, and verse 2, <clears throat> it says, be not forgetful, and this is a sermon I could do, uh, I've done in time past, but be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. You know, think about, and the, and the point being stressed in that verse is to be friendly. You never know who you're entertaining. You never know who you're talking to. Uh, whether it be at the store, of course, whether it be at services, be mindful to encourage them and give them the, the strength that they need in their daily walk. We don't know what we can accomplish with someone unless we open ourselves up to them. Number three, I owe regular and consistent giving. One writer once said, if it's right for my congregation to pay its bills, it is right for me to give each week. I understand there are times when we might be absent. There might be times we have an emergency that springs up. But I want to say also that when the pandemic hit us last year, uh, it's the strangest anomaly that, that, that we could have that was seen is the contribution went up for a time. It was encouraging. And the contribution is, is still relatively in good terms. And I don't want to, I don't, I don't believe in, uh, in karma. It's just a, a man-made dogma. But uh, I'm not saying jinx it, but at the same time, I want to say thank you for your contributions to the church's work. Continue to think about how you can give positively to the Lord and always think about the fact that we have prospered. Our brothers have said today, we have been blessed, and we have. We think about our material possessions, our families. I like to think of Job and I thought about him this morning for some odd reason. And, and last night I thought about Job, and, and I don't know why. But I thought about what was life like <clears throat> the day before Job found, all, found out everything. I mean, think about it. The day before was probably life as usual. And then the day arrived. Sir, I am the only one left to tell you your kids are gone. Someone else shows up. Sir, I'm the only one left to tell you. Your livestock has been stolen. Sir, I have come to you to tell you. I think about what must have gone through Job's mind when that day finally arrived. And the Bible says he did not sin against God. The Bible says that he said, Blessed is the Lord, he gives, and what does he also do? He taketh away. Can you this year continue to live in 2021 and say the Lord gives and the Lord takes, but blessed be the name of the Lord. We're all prosperous. We've all been blessed in so many rich ways. 2021, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's it looking like. But continue to think about giving back. Not just monetarily, of course. But think about how you can give yourself. If you give yourself to the Lord, then everything else takes care of itself. Number five, 
or number four, excuse me. Think about your attendance this year. We attend services for several reasons. We get to show God how much we love him, how much we appreciate him. I have always said, and the Bible gives evidence to this, what is worship service? To give to God something and to give him our best. I'm not here to be entertained. I'm here to give to God something. And I want to invite you this year, if this past year has been about getting, think about this year is about giving. Giving to God a worship that he would be pleased with. In fact, we learn in Hebrews chapter 10, we learn in verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25. The Bible says, a verse we well know, verse 24, let us consider one another, provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. I like that word provoke. It means to push you, to stimulate you, to motivate you to be in, a, in the right direction. Think about your attendance this year. If it's been off, there's only one thing you can do about it. Well, it's, the, the ink is dry on all of that. 2021, it's going to be different. I want to be involved in Bible class. I want to be involved in the worship services. I want to help where I possibly can in every aspect. Because why? Because we can edify each other, encourage each other. We gain strength. Now, I know attendance in and of itself won't get us to heaven, but it's a sign of faithfulness. Is attendance mandated? Well, we just read verse 25. But I've got to be given to day-to-day -day life living for God every single day. And I also want to encourage you with our Bible class. We are getting ready to transition in our Sunday morning from uh, what we've been studying. And I just want to invite you to become part of that. Uh, and if you have a study, you know, I'm here at your pleasure. There's a topic you want. If there's a study you want, I want to invite you. Hey, Seth, I really love to hit on this. Just ask me, tell me. I'd love to know what you want to talk about because I'll get it together best I can. And, of course, I want to encourage everyone about our programs. We're fixed to try to restart. We wait until 2021, and I'm hoping to get things going in certain areas. So be praying about that. And that leads me to number five. This year, I want to encourage everyone pray for the church's leaders. I probably hadn't talked about this very much, but our men, they're not perfect. There is no perfect elder for those who have elders congregations or men who are serving in various congregations. But it has been said by one writer that a congregation either makes or breaks its leaders. Folks, our support helps them be strong and encourages them. I want to encourage you this year, have you prayed for the leadership? The men, I know, pray when we're in our meeting. We pray about this. We pray about that. We have special meetings where something comes up that might be a specialty item, and we'll bring it up, and we'll think, talk about it, pray about it, make a decision. <clears throat> but this year, pray for your leaders. To pray for, what can I pray about, Seth? Well, Lord, help them have the direction, the drive, the motivation, the wisdom, the spiritualness to lead the congregation in a way that would best benefit each and every member and the Lord's kingdom here. To pray for their families. Uh, you know, every man here uh, has a family. They have to uh, help, support, and, and deal with. And certainly we can do that this year to pray for them, encourage them. We see like in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 to be mindful to, to pray for your leaders and to support them and to encourage them. You know, instead of thinking of What's wrong with the church? Think about what's right with the church. That right here, if I die, and this is my destination year perhaps, I can get to heaven from here. Well, let's pray that we'll continue for every person to enable them to be involved in good works, to be involved in faithful attendance. And if they walk out the door, they feel good about where they are with God in their spiritual life. That's what I want. And that's what I hope you want as well. Number six. The church and her primary mission is to win the lost. It was the Lord's work, Luke 19, 10. May it be our work as well. The way we do this is by sharing the gospel. And one of the things that any church, it seems like you hear among people in the congregation, is, well, I don't know that I know of them. When I think back to the garrison demoniac, the, the, the man who was possessed, chains couldn't hold him, 
One of the things that you and I can do is share our story. We can share our story. Because he went to Demopolis after Jesus converted him. He told him, go tell them what I helped you with. Think about this year. You might say, well, I don't really know much about the Bible. Well, there's a great point. 2021 will be about learning the Bible. Why do I worship the way that I do? Why do I hold to these truths the way that I do? Know these things. Apply these things. And talk to your families. You know, you think about winning the lost. It might very well be your spouse that needs to be one. Or a relative of extended nature. A cousin, perhaps. Certainly there are those in our community. We can do this with a stranger sharing the word. We can do this with sharing it with our family and our friends. We can do this by living right. Remember, the Bible says they think it weird that you not run as they do. If you live the Christian life and they aren't, they're going to look at you differently just because you don't do it. They're going to look at you weird. That's good. Hopefully they'll think about it. Why do you live the way that you do? Why do you do that? Well, hopefully it'll lead to a conversation. Well, let me tell you why. Let's be persistent in our efforts to win the lost. We know the fate of the lost. What is the end result for the lost, folks? If they don't change, where are they going? There's only one place. Hell is where they're going. And it's not a good place. And from this pulpit, we've talked about it. This year, think about where every one of them are going if we don't do our part. Now, ultimately, God holds them accountable. Because God says in Romans 1 that just nature itself makes them without excuse. But we can help. I appreciate that our men and their wisdom, and by their pleasure, I serve at their leadership. We have a radio program. We have a house-to-house -house that we continue to uh, identify with and, and put out there. We continue to, as we hope to in 2021 with youth and Monday night for the master, to revive and look at ways and strategize what can we do to best impact our community. But folks, I want you to think this year about 2021. Maybe it's just getting my spouse, my loved one, to be faithful. Work on it this year. We should want no one to be lost, not a single person. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 11 is a powerful verse because it says, let me get there first, as Paul writes, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. But the first part, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Something very important to look at in 2021. And number seven, think about your fellow brothers and sisters. I want to share this, and I, I think Miss Charlotte will certainly appreciate this, but I got this in the mail, and I thought to try to convey my point. Charlotte, thank you for this note. It was very kind of you. When I sit there and I listen to people in the congregation, whether across the aisle, and I can listen carefully to hear their voice. They're singing, and they're here. And you think about, you know, I get a card about the Brother Billy's passing, still, still mourning that loss, I'm sure. You can't help but be encouraged by our brothers and sisters because every single person here is dealing with something. Every one of them are dealing with something. And when you think about what you're dealing with, think about how you can overcome, how you can become stronger, how you can become better. We can't allow our home congregation to be a place where hearts become cold, Toward one another. Encourage each other and keep your place open and warm towards each other. In fact, Peter said in 1 Peter 4 and verse 8, And above all these things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover a multitude of sins. We learn in 1 Peter chapter 3, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, the Bible says here, <clears throat> Finally, be ye all of one mind, have compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing, knowing that you therefore unto your call, that you should inherit a blessing. Today is a day of blessings. Do you see it that way? See, easily the devil's trying. No, it's not a blessing today. It's not. Yes, it is. It is a blessing, folks. And you have each other. Let's look at it that way. Ephesians 4, 3, as we just read, and then Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, he says in Philippians 2, verses 2 and 3, Fulfill my joy, he says. Be like-minded. 
Have the same love. Be of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each other esteem others better than themselves. Folks, as I close this morning, thank you for listening. Welcome to 2021, first Lord's Day of the Year. I invite you to think about this can be my destination year. What will I make of it? If you're here today, remember this. God has forgiven us of all our wrongs. Matthew chapter 6. If He forgave us, let us be a forgiving people. We love Him, the Bible says, because He loved us first. We love Him. Tonight's lesson I want to talk about coming into God's presence. You know, when we think about worship, may we look at even worship service and it being a blessing. That we're coming to God and giving to Him our very soul. Is your compass in the line of God's will? Here are things you can do for the congregation right here in Waynesboro. We are blessed. We are fortunate. And we certainly can look at this year with a new sense. Whatever your need is to be baptized, if you need to come into contact with the blood, that opportunity is available to you right now. You can be forgiven of your sin, be immersed, be resurrected into newness of life. Or if you need to come and ask the prayers of the church, whatever you need, don't hesitate to come. Watch together we stand. Jesus is standing in my